Okay, good evening, estimate colleagues. Welcome to the 28th edition of the Tourism Online Forum series in November 2023. And this will be our last series for this year. We are delighted to have you joining us for the enlightening event, which is a proudly hosted by the Center for Advanced Tourism Research, CATS, at the Hokkaido University. This is your host, Mo. For tonight's session, it is indeed an honor to be part of this gathering in the spirit of Christmas season. And today's forum uh, promises insightful discussion about Christmas tourism. And this online lecture explores how Christmas tourism became a force of both community development and tourism transformation. Today, we are uh, very honored to have Dr. Josie Carlos uh, Gacha Rossi, if, uh, if I pronounce right. And uh, we can also call him GC to share his recent research, Jingle All the Way, Community Development Through Christmas Tourism. And uh, Professor JC uh, is a professor of business ethic at the Oulu Business School, uh, University of Oulu, Finland. And he has previously held a senior lecture position at the University of Lapland, Faculty of Social Sciences, Multidimensional Tourism Institute, MTI. He also holds an associate professor position in corporate social responsibility in tourism at the Tampere University and the University of uh, Marburg. He works in the field of corporate social responsibility, uh, business ethics, and responsible management education. His current research agenda focuses on human animal relations, responsible tourism experiences, and experimental learning. Oh, that sounds very cool. He has published in a very read journal, such as Journal of Business Ethics, Management Learning, Journal of Marketing Management, Journal of Sustainable Tourism, Journal of uh, Tourism Geographies, Tourism Recreation Research, and Journal of Teaching in Travel and Tourism. He has also co-authored several chapters for books published by Rutledge, uh, Pravagrav, uh, Macmillan, uh, Spinger, and uh, De, De Gruyter. I don't know how to pronounce this, sorry. He played a key role in co-editing a book that de uh, develops into the role of Christmas tourism in uh, Ryan Nemi, Finland. Additionally, he contributed significantly to the creation of the Christmas Experiences Academy, a summer school hosted by the University of Lapland in close co uh, co uh, cooperation with the tourism operators. And please notice that this online lecture will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel of Center for Advanced Tourism Research. So now let's invite Jesse to, uh, to share his lecture and a, Q a question and answer. If you have any, please leave in the comment below. Thank you very much. And JC, the floor is yours. Okay, you can unmute yeah. your microphone. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you more for, for the introduction. And um, thank you to to Mo and Kat and also the Hokkaido University for inviting me to, to be part of, of this uh, interesting series. Um, really an honor to be to be here and very delighted to to share some insights on on the on Christmas tourism research and in relation to community development. So um, at the moment, so like I still kind of have two affiliations of the University of Lapland and University of Oulu. So like. I ended my, my time at the University of Lapland now in December and, and then continuing in January with the University of Oulu. I, I already also I have a relation for that with that university. That is the reason why we are here in my um, first slide, uh, two universities. Um, but uh, a, so I will kind of provide a kind of a presentation uh, about Christmas tourism in Romaniemi, um, kind of looking into how on this type of of tourism has contributed to the development of the community here in Rovaniemi, in a city located uh, on the Arctic Circle in, in uh, Northern Finland. And 
if you have kind of some kind of also interest in looking into more information about this particular topic or the other topics I have been doing research, you're very welcome to visit my web page. So there you will find also kind of publications and different uh, research projects that I have been involved in. So that would be the best way to get some insights if you would like to know more about it. But uh, yeah, say, this said, I, I will kind of think uh, continue uh, or start with the presentation. Um, and please feel free to use the research, uh, the story, the questions and answer uh, forum for asking questions. And I will try to answer them the best I can, maybe to, to ask the, the end of the presentation. Uh, here's some uh, outline of, of the presentation uh, for today. So like I will kind of give a short introduction into Christmas, so like positioning this kind of uh, research and the, the work we, we have been doing at the University of, of Lapland, uh, but also so like uh, in relation to the work also done in, in by other tourism scholars in relation to Christmas tourism. So I will give kind of also an introduction to Christmas related research in relation to tourism studies and organization studies. Uh, and also then uh, we will start talking about Christmas tourism in Rovaniemi. And um, an idea has been that uh, to provide kind of a historical review of Christmas tourism developing in Rovaniemi. And through this kind of review or kind of uh, description of these historical events uh, taking place in, in, in Rovaniemi, Finland, then I, I hope that the audience so will kind of uh, find connections to discussions in, in tourism research, for example, in relation to maybe innovation, entrepreneurship, public uh, private partnerships. So I will I won't go through kind of discuss the, the topics in relation to this theory, but I think that you will actually uh, kind of uh, make the connection by yourself. And, and towards the end of the of the presentation, then I, I will maybe draw attention to some of these uh, topics I already mentioned. So. Um, also, we will talk about some kind of benefits and challenges of Christmas tourism in Rovaniemi. So kind of taking a look at the, at the kind of the uh, positive uh, kind of uh, impact of this particular kind of uh, type of, of tourism. And, and then, uh, but also to the challenges and then some lessons for community development through tourism. So that is more or less kind of an outline of the presentation. So, but let's uh, get some uh, the concept straight from the very beginning. So we talk about, so we have kind of three different topics, uh, or so, sorry, uh, concepts. In this presentation, we talk about tourism development or tourism in that sense. So tourism can be seen here as one of the most significant community development tools, uh, particularly in marginal or peripheral areas. And, and this is the case of Rovaniemi, which is a city uh, in the northern part of Finland. It is a city located in the peripheral region. Uh, so it's part of the Arctic region, uh, as I said uh, previously, kind of located on the Arctic Circle. So in that sense, uh, that is the connection. May we talk about kind of Christmas tourism and how it helps to develop this particular community in the north. Um, and then we have the, the word co community. Um, which I will can, like to use the, the term as the definition where saying communities in connection to uh, communitas uh, from Latin, uh, which can be used to describe a whole group of people crossing a threshold and to get, uh, together and together entering a liminal time and space that is an in between uh, that is neither past nor present and a space that is neither here or not there. And that is a thing uh, I see here in, in, in Rovaniemi and its development through the last uh, 70 years uh, as a tourism destination, as a community. So there is a, a strong connection still between the past and the present. And it's also this connection is also recreating its future. Uh, and that is the reason why I draw attention to this particular kind of definition or way of, of uh, defining community. And then uh, the third uh, concept is uh, Christmas tourism. Um, Christmas tourism is used in uh, reference to travel activities uh, centered around uh, Christmas, the Christmas scene, where people visit destinations to celebrate, experience, and enjoy 
uh, Christmas traditions and attractions. So in, in this case, we are talking about uh, destination or attraction around the topic of Christmas. And that is the reason why I use the term Christmas tourism, as uh, many of the researchers working on this topic have been using in uh, their uh, studies. But just to give an, a, a kind of idea of the concept we are using and to, to clarify them before we uh, continue with the, with the topic. <clears throat> So as we are talking about Christmas tourism, then we need to think about which Christmas we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So there are different ways we can define uh, Christmas and the meaning of Christmas for different um, communities around the world. But here we're talking about Anglo-American Christmas, which is a combination of English, uh, Germanic, and American values and practices. So it emerged to in the 19th century. And as you will see also here in this presentation, uh, there are also connections about the time when this uh, Christmas um, started to emerge in, in, in the United States, in England. Also, at the same time, also there were kind of also talks or conversations about Christmas in Finland. Uh, this Anglo-American Christmas is uh, predominantly secular, so it's not connected to a religion, directed to religion. Uh, and this is something we can see also uh, how also globally has been expanded in that sense that also uh, countries around the world where maybe uh, Christianity is not the main religion, so still they celebrate uh, uh, Christmas. And I think that this is also the case in Japan, for example, that the celebration of Christmas, and, and there is an interesting kind of uh, also articles about, for example, the connection between uh, Kentucky fried, uh, fr fried chicken and KFC and Christmas celebration in, in Japan. So in that sense, we can see how and also this Anglo-American Christmas also take different shapes in different parts of the world, which is also very interesting. So it's about gift giving and charity. And Santa Claus is kind of the unifying feature. So it also was in the 19th century when, when Christmas was started to be connected to the idea of Santa Claus as a, as a feature. Uh, and Santa Claus, the image of Santa Claus has been, uh, been developed uh, uh, over the last 100 years. So if we look at the kind of picture of Santa Claus at the beginning of the mid uh, 19th century and the, the one we have now, they have changed uh, a little bit. <clears throat> it is a, a family-oriented celebration. Also, when we talk about Anglo-American Christmas, it's about family uh, and, and the children are in the, in, in the spotlight of, of this celebration. So kind of a this kind of overview of, of what kind of uh, Christmas we're talking about uh, during this presentation. And then also to draw attention to, to Christmas, uh, to this kind of Anglo-American Christmas as an economic phenomenon. Uh, this is also important to, to us to, to look at it uh, before we, we enter into the topic of the presentation, the idea of Christmas tourism in Romania. So um, it is, uh, we can see that uh, Christmas uh, considerably increased uh, the average turnover in different sectors. So if we think about retailers, re restaurants, hot hotels. So during the Christmas time, so this actually the, the turnover increased in all these kind of uh, economic sectors. As it requires a significant seasonal workforce uh, and also the manufacturing of Christmas uh, decorations and toys. So it increased dramatically. Uh, and in this case, China has become a, a kind of a very important producer of, of, um, of uh, decorations and, and, and toys uh, related to Christmas, to the season. Uh, in 2014, the United States, for example, imported from China 1 billion worth of decorations and 137 uh, billion million dollars was on an artificial tree, just to give an idea about only one country and also the economic impact that, the, that Christmas has. And also during the Christmas season, also waste increases in exponentially. So just to give some kind of uh, points connected to Christmas as an economic phenomenon, and in the case of, of course, if we think about tourism, so this kind of destination that are, are, are kind of are using the Christmas theme also kind of we can see that they have also similar similarities to this kind of economic impact of Christmas in general. If we think about, for example, Rovaniemi, as I will tell soon, also there is also the seasonal work, also the increase of, of turnover during the, the season, maybe not just the Christmas season, but the winter season. Um, but I will tell more about it soon in uh, as we move forward with this presentation. 
Uh, because of the economic uh, uh, role of Christmas, um, so there has been um, some research done in organizational studies in relation to, to Christmas as an economic and organizational event. So there is actually uh, several articles, studies, uh, uh, discussing uh, Christmas uh, in terms of the economic uh, impact, but also in, 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 the, in relation to uh, the social cultural aspect of Christmas. Um, there is a book recently published uh, by Professor Philip Hancock from the University of Essex um, called Organizing Christmas. And if you are interested in, in getting more insight into, into the, the idea of Christmas or as an economic phenomenon and in relation to and, and in relation to um to organizations. So then I, I recommend uh to take a look at, at the book. And also if you would like to know more about Christmas, the historical development of Christmas, Anglo-American Christmas, then I think that this book will provide kind of very good insights on, in, into the topic. Yeah, as mentioned before, we can see that uh, Christmas has a very uh, important role in society globally. And um, as an economic sector, and so the impact it has on society in, in different aspects. Uh, but also, also there is a, another part of Christmas that is essentially if we talk about tourism. Right? So then we don't talk only about the season, that maybe will be December. Uh, the December months, uh, but also we are talking about uh, maybe destinations, attractions that are uh, working all year round. Uh, there are different kind of similar places uh, um, or kind of Christmas uh, related places, for example, in, in the Northern countries, in Norway and Sweden, uh, and also in Portugal, for example, also in the United States and in different parts of the world, there are these kind of places uh, where you can experience Christmas uh, around the year. Also in Iceland, also they are they also in me but uh, they have also the the Christmas kind of the Christmas town of Iceland, and they have the Yule Lads. Uh, that is actually in we, we look at this kind of destination, they also kind of follow this Anglo American Christmas. Uh, is kind of the broad they sell and the maybe the experience and the story they tell about is kind of related to this particular type of Christmas, with of course their own kind of uh, uh, local aspects. In the case of, of Iceland, so it's kind of a different story because they have certain uh, Santa Claus is not only one, and it's kind of a different, a little bit different to the Anglo American Christmas. But still, if you go to to this place in Iceland, then the shops also they will send all this kind of Christmas also. Uh, um, decoration and, and, and toys and so on that is kind of connected to the Anglo-American Christmas. So in that sense, also kind of interesting. And in today, so we will talk about kind of also similar similar plays, uh, but in Rovaniemi, uh, Finland. Something about Christmas tourism as a research subject. So as I was saying at the beginning, there are um, different studies connected to, to Christmas. For example, studies to, uh, looking at, at Christmas products or Christmas related products. Uh, for example, one study kind of looking at the life cycle of, of Lapland Christmas tourism, uh, charter flights. Uh, uh, so it's actually, you will see today uh, when I talk about, about Christmas tourism in, in, in Lapland, in, fin in Rovaniemi. So um, it's the, the charter flight played a very important role in the development of this particular uh, tourism um, tourism uh, sector. Uh, also studies about looking at Christmas, as, uh, the con modification of Christmas uh, or Christmas and an extractive industry in Lapland, uh, Christmas tourism in Lapland in relation to climate change, uh, also place branding and, and tourism experience of Christmas, uh, Christmas from a tourism work point of view, uh, and also in relation to competition and collaboration or scholars who are using the, the, uh, the concept of competition. So this just to give an, uh, an overview of, of the studies kind of related to Christmas. And in this case, in these studies that I, I'm showing you uh, here, they are connected to Lapland, uh, to Rovaniemi, Finland. And the reason for that is maybe, uh, if we look at places, kind of this type of Christmas uh, destinations around the world, Maybe uh, Rovaniemi is maybe one of the destinations as 
has been kind of uh, where the, the development of Christmas tourism is strongly connected to the development of the whole uh, destination. So and that is maybe the reason why also it has attracted the interest of scholars to look into different phenomena in relation to this particular place. Because of the relevance of Christmas in Romaniemi, we did a, a study in 2013 with our students at the University of Lapland and at the Multidimensional Tourism Institute um, about, um, about the role of Christmas in, in tourism in, in, in Romaniemi. Uh, the, the name of the, of the book, uh, which is available online, is Joulu Aina in Nakokulmia, Romaniemi Joulu Matka Elung. Um, in, in English, always Christmas insights into Rovaniemi's Christmas tourism. So the book uh, consists of, I think, something like uh, nine or ten chapters, and and it uh, look into Christmas from different perspectives, from the perspective of destination management organization, from the perspective of employees, from the perspective of the local community, and so on. Um, and the reason is kind of. Uh, is we decided at that point at that time that we would, would like to have the book in Finnish because we would we wanted to um to have uh, that the the local community and the people living in Rovaniemi would be able to read the the, the, the book and to get in, insights into how Christmas has been shaping also that place and that was the reason why we uh, at the end we can publish it in Finnish, but this is actually a limitation if you don't understand Finnish. So to to follow kind of the, the idea presented in the in the book, but in the book, uh, if you want to access it, uh, you will find a very good kind of list of references that could lead to uh, Christmas tourism related research. From that point of view, it's also a good source that you can use if you are interested in knowing more about about this particular topic. Okay, but now I will uh, invite you to join me in, in a journey to, to Rovaniemi. So going from Hokkaido uh, to Rovaniemi, uh, Finland. And as I was telling before, Rovaniemi is, is located on the Arctic Circle, it's the northern part of Finland. And it is uh, actually, we think about this area in the north of Finland. So Rovaniemi is the capital of Lapland. Uh, Lapland is the, uh, is the northern uh, Finnish uh, province. Uh, it's uh, the the uh, the size of Lapland is uh, it's thirty percent of the size of Finland. So you can see it's a, a, a large portion of, of Finland as a country. So one third of Finland is, is in Lapland, uh, but the population is only three percent or three point four percent. So, uh, so a, a very small part of the Finnish population live in Lapland. And that is also what I was telling at the beginning, that is, is a peripheral area. It's, it's kind of a, a remote area. Uh, in that sense, interesting for looking into, into tourism, how tourism actually uh, contribute to the social and economic development of this particular area. And this is what actually at the beginning I was I was uh, pointing to when uh, discussing this uh, the idea of, of uh, tourism as a as a tool for development in in these particular areas. But yeah, we will go to Romaniemi and uh, look at the history uh, of of Christmas tourism in this particular part of Europe. Um, just to give an overview before I start talking about the different kind of events taking place in Romaniemi that contribute to the development of Christmas, I, I thought that I can provide kind of a short overview so that you actually, you can then understand um, the, the, the different kind of events I will describe in, in a few moments. So I, I, I can see that in, in Romaniemi, so we have kind of two kind of, I would say kind of two uh, paths of development. One in relation to tourism, one is the Arctic Circle, and then the other one is, is Christmas. Uh, and the Arctic Circle started in, in 1920 when uh, Finnish uh, colonel Oiva Vilamo, uh, he uh, uh, placed uh, a sign you know, on the Arctic Circle in Romaniemi, pointing that this is the place where the Arctic Circle is situated. Uh, I don't think that uh, when he put the sign there, maybe he was thinking that he would try to attract tourists, 
but it's uh, happened that then uh, people started stopping by in this place to take pictures and to say, okay, I'm now in the Arctic Circle. It's kind of, it became kind of an, uh, an attraction and uh, that people are traveling to this part of Finland then they will actually go to this place um, and take a picture. Maybe they were on the way north, but they will stop there for, for, for a picture or not just looking at the place and so on. And that is also what could continue to happen in the 19. 50 uh, after the, um, the World War II, when uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, the, uh, the wife of the former president of the United States, visited uh, Rovaniemi. Um, and also she visited the Arctic Circle. Uh, and from that point on, the Arctic Circle become, became an attraction in that sense, that uh, it, it became a tourist attraction. It was developing that way. But at the same time, we can see that there were also always stories uh, related to Christmas that were around Lapland. So that the stories about Christmas and Santa Claus living in Lapland. And they were actually kind of uh, kind of parallel, happening in parallel to, to the development of the Arctic Circle. Um, and some attempts, there were some attempts to develop Christmas tourism in Lapland happening during the 50s, 60s, 70s. And at some point, these, these kind of development, they create a connection between these Christmas stories and uh, the Arctic Circle. So the Arctic Circle, uh, Santa Claus was brought into the Arctic Circle and the Arctic Circle became then later Santa Claus Village, as it's known nowadays. And nowadays they use actually, when we refer to this particular place, we talk about uh, Santa Claus Village Arctic Circle or Arctic Circle Santa Claus Village. It's kind of the same place. So they, the story, they merge somehow. And it's kind of interesting also about the development of tourism in, in, in Rovaniemi and Lapland in general. Uh, also another interesting uh, fact about this development is that in until the 80s or late 80s, uh, uh, Rovaniemi or uh, Lapland as a tourism destination, it was a summer uh, destination. It was a uh, summer season was the most important one, as you can see from the picture at the beginning about showing actually uh, attracting visitors to, to Lapland. You have kind of this kind of summer views of the place. But later, then when Santa Claus actually and the art circle are merged, then it became an art, uh, a winter destination. So winter season become more important for uh, the development of tourism in the region. It's kind of also a very interesting kind of um, phenomenon taking place. So uh, a tourism destination going from a summer, uh, for being a summer destination to becoming a winter destination. Um, but we will talk more about it now when we go into the, the history of, of the place. Still, uh, some people, visitors who come to, to Rovaniemi, they may think, okay, wow, they brought uh, Santa Claus to, to Lapland, to Rovaniemi. So this kind of is, is not authentic and so on, but uh, not uh, really because there were stories in the 19th century about Santa Claus living in Lapland. And that is uh, actually something that some uh, storytellers uh, will uh, draw attention that, okay, Santa Claus lives somewhere in Lapland. There were kind of places that were mentioned. So like uh, Rovaniemi, Onasbara, Onas Hill, one particular place in Rovaniemi was mentioned, but also uh, Halti uh, Mountain in the northern part of Finland, close to the Norwegian uh, uh, border also was mentioned the stories and also uh, Korvatunturi or Eierfeld that is close to the Russian border also was mentioned. Uh, but always it was not clear where actually Santa Claus is living, but the stories were there. And Zachary Topelius or Zaharias uh, Topelius, also uh, a Finnish uh, writer, storyteller, uh, also writing books for, for children. Also he was one of the key features also bringing this narrative of Santa Claus living in in the north. And actually uh, Topelius, uh, he spent uh, his uh, childhood in Oulu, uh, which is uh, not part of the Finnish province of Lapland, but it's lo located in the northern part of Finland, and not very close to it. And maybe this influenced uh, the stories he was telling uh, in, in his books. But uh, the, the idea of, of Santa Claus living in Lapland also was there already in the 19th century. But who was then the person who, who, tell, who told exactly where Santa Claus was living? And it was a uh, uh, radio, radio moderator, um, Marcus Rautio, uh, well known 
as Uncle Marcos uh, here in Finland. And he was the, the person who, uh, a couple of days before Christmas, uh, he unveiled uh, the location of Santa Claus. Uh, this was in 1927. Uh, he said that Santa Claus is living in the year fair or Corva Tunturi, what you can see here in the, in the picture, uh, a, a mountain located uh, next to the Russian border. Uh, so part, uh, part of the mountain actually located in, in, in the Russian side and, and the other part in the, in the Finnish side. And it's a location that is very kind of uh, far away for civilization, difficult to access. So in that sense, it it's, it's sounded very interesting from the point of view of fairy tale and uh, storytelling, that this is the place where Santa Claus is living. But he was the person who, who actually um, disclosed the, the place. And here we can see also the, the role of kind of uh, storytellers, writers, and then the medium, radio moderator, in kind of shaping the, the, the story of Christmas in, in this particular part of, of Finland. But then what happened, so like, uh, so during that time, actually this story uh, was further developed and, and that was a story that was told to the, to the children until uh, the lay, um, to the, to the beginning of the, of the forties. Uh, and then we had the, the World War II happening uh, in Europe. Also, uh, Finland was affected. Uh, there were kind of three different wars uh, fought in, in Finland. I'm not going to go into detail of these wars because it's, it's going to be kind of uh, going out of the, of the focus of this presentation. But the, the, the fact is that during the third uh, war or toward the end of World War II, uh, Rovaniemi, uh, so they uh, was totally destroyed. So the whole city, 90% uh, of the city was destroyed. There was no, nothing left. Um, and it had to be kind of rebuilt. And here maybe it's kind of the interesting thing about looking at tourism and kind of the idea of Christmas and the Arctic circuit in the development of the city. Of course, maybe tourism was not the most important industry uh, after the war, but it still played a very important role in the development of the city and nowadays uh, play a, a major role in, in, in its development. Uh, but this is the reason I wanted to show this kind of uh, picture, a particular event, because we can see that, okay, Rovaniemi was totally destroyed. Um, and there is when we have actually one Finnish uh, architect, uh, very famous, and I think in, in Japan also, um, many people know about Alba Alto, the Finnish architect, um, who actually got the, the task to, to uh, design the plan for Rovaniemi. So you remember Rovaniemi was totally destroyed. So for an architect, it was actually the opportunity to design the city from the scratch. Uh, and, and the design he created uh, in 1945 was actually this kind of reindeer street plan. Uh, and the Romaniemi city center, as you can see here, is actually kind of a reindeer head. Uh, and so you have the antlers, and then you have actually the, the head, and then the eye is the stadium of Romaniemi. Uh, so the football, uh, or the uh, soccer uh, team a place uh, in that particular place. You can see the eye of the reindeer. Uh, this is kind of not very connected to, at that point, to the idea of Christmas tourism, but uh, nowadays it played a very important role. And if we think about Santa Claus as the main feature of, of Christmas, then we have a reindeer also is plays a very particular role. And also the reindeer is in, in the city plan. Uh, something also interesting to know when Rovaniemi was recreated or reconstructed. And at that time was when then um, Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, the former um, wife of the president of the United States, uh, he came to visit Rovaniemi uh, in 1950 uh, to look at the reconstruction of the city. Actually, he was coming to Europe to see different places that have been destroyed during the war. And he, she wanted to see uh, how the reconstruction is, is moving forward. And one of the places she, sh she chose to visit was uh, Rovaniemi in the Arctic Circle. Uh, people in Rovaniemi at that time, so is thinking about tourism, they didn't know actually what they can offer to the to the to to Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, so what kind of because the, everything was destroyed, the West actually started to, to, to reconstruct the city. Uh, they had no attractions there. But at some point, someone uh, uh, re rem remember, okay, we have the Arctic Circle. So this uh, actually has been a tourism attraction. Um, but, but there was nothing there in the Arctic Circle, only the the site. And then they decided to uh, create a cottage. And the cottage, they say that it was actually designed in one day 
and they build the cabin or cottage in seven days. And this was actually the place that where uh, Eleanor Roosevelt uh, was uh, received uh, during her visit to Rovaniemi. And she was the first person who sent uh, a letter from the Arctic Circle uh, directed to the President of the United States at that time. So, and this is the beginning of this place as a tourism attraction. So after that, after this point, then uh, the Arctic Circle becomes a, a place where tourists will go to, to visit, especially in the summer, as I was telling before. And there were some shops there where uh, also a kind of um, handicraft were sold to the tourists. It was very kind of local, very kind of traditional, Finnish traditions and, and Finnish uh, traditional handicraft uh, were sold in, in this particular place. But the whole uh, kind of uh, experience was the visit to the Arctic Circle. So 1950. In 1950, also, there was also a kind of radio, radio moderator, it was a famous one, um, a journalist um, uh, whose name was uh, Nilo Tarwa Yarvi, uh, well known as Tarwa. And he visited uh, uh, Disneyland in the, in the 50s. And he was very kind of uh, surprised, um, kind of excited about the idea of Disneyland. And he, he got the idea that, the, uh, that uh, we could create something similar. In, in, in Lapland, in Rovaniemi. So like uh, he called it Christmas land. So from Disneyland to Christmas land. And he was actually very enthusiastic about this idea uh, uh, during kind of the next uh, 20 years, 25 years, he was actually putting a lot of effort into developing the idea, also investments. Also, he was also putting uh, money into the development of Christmas land. In 1967, uh, actually, the, the Christmas Land Limited was founded. Um, but uh, despite all the efforts, uh, then uh, it, didn't took off, it didn't take off. So the, the idea stayed there. Uh, but he uh, plays a very important role in bringing this idea of kind of Christmas tourism development in, in, in Lapland, in, and especially in Rovaniemi, because Christmas Land and, and the kind of this attraction, because he wanted to do is kind of having a similar to Disneyland, but uh, in relation around Christmas theme. And the, the place was supposed to be uh, Rovaniemi. And there were different places in Rovaniemi that they were thinking about that could be one of the locations for it. Uh, the Arctic Circle was one of these places, but also there were other places that were actually maybe were seen as more interesting for this particular project. But yeah, with Tarwa, actually, uh, it didn't, uh, the idea didn't take off. It, it uh, needed more time. Uh, so maybe at that time, there was also not the, kind of the political support uh, from the authorities. Uh, we should also remember that uh, at that time, maybe the 60s, 70s, also all the industries were seeing are more important. So forestry, uh, metallurgic, and so energy uh, production and so on, where maybe uh, we are actually political um, decision makers who are thinking about when uh, developing a particular sector. And maybe this is the reason why there was no interest in maybe putting effort into helping to develop uh, tourism and the idea that this particular day, uh, Tarwa was presenting uh, the idea of Christmas land. But later in the, in the 80s, then things are starting to, to kind of to take uh, some shape in relation to Christmas tourism. And it is said that Christmas tourism started in the UK in 1981. And again, there was another, another personality, Steve Mitchell, who was working as a representative for Finnair in the UK. Uh, and he was in love with Lapland. And he wanted to bring people to Lapland. There was a, one of the things he wanted to do uh, and and he was uh, very kind of obsessed with the idea that to bring uh, British people to see Lapland uh, um, and to see also uh, Santa Claus or the idea of Christmas. He also maybe was also influenced by the idea of Christmas land. Um, um, it's something that maybe he also tried to share with uh, um, people from the from the UK. Um, and he organized a competition in 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 London. Uh, the was organized by radio station Capital Radio, um, and the competition was to so the winners of the competition uh, were supposed to be uh, brought to Finland to to see Santa Claus in Rovaniemi. So uh, six children uh, won the, the first competition. They got the prize and they traveled to Finland to Lapland uh, to meet Santa Claus in Rovaniemi. And this was repeated also a couple of times after that. 
And this was the time when everything started to kind of come closer in the chains, Arctic Circle uh, and, and Santa Claus. Santa Claus coming to the Arctic Circle to receive uh, the visitors. So it started with the, with the children uh, brought by the Steve Mitchell in, through the competition, but then it then continues with also other kind of uh, other uh, travel agencies also doing the same work in the UK and kind of um, promoting Lapland as the place where you can meet Santa Claus. And right after this kind of uh, event, uh, then it happened that the uh, governor of the province of Lapland as co-owners, and here we can see also the role of uh, uh, political decision makers in the development of this particular attraction. It's not only about entrepreneurs and innovators, but also uh, the municipality and, and political actors in promoting this type of development. And, and Asko Oinas, uh, who was at that point the governor of the province of Lapland, he declared the whole of Lapland as Christmas land. It happened in December 1984. So just a declaration that Lapland is Christmas land. And I, I assure that this contributed to the uh, development of Christmas tourism in Lapland. It, it actually provided the ratification that this is actually something, a direction we should take in the development of, of Rovaniemi uh, as, a, as a city, as an as a Arctic community, and so on. Um, right after this happened in December, and right after this declaration, then we have another interesting event happening in Rovaniemi. So uh, so the Concord, the, the first time, uh, so the Concord was the, the first uh, trip made by the Concord to Rovaniemi in December. 1984, it was on the um, Christmas Eve. Uh, uh, it was flight B, uh, British Airways uh, 9075C. And it, it brought um, British tourists uh, direct to Rovaniemi. And you can imagine, so like we're talking about 84. So at that time, we, how many places were uh, flown by the Concorde? The Concorde was uh, flying from Paris to New York and London, but Rovaniemi in the Arctic Circle, a very small uh, town with 30,000 inhabitants. So uh, this was very special. And it was so special that not only for the tourists and maybe the people who were following where the Concorde was actually flying, but also for the locals. So there were, people say that there was something like 10,000 cars parked around the airport. So the locals uh, from Rovaniemi, but also from other parts of Lapland, they traveled to the Rovaniemi airport to see the Concorde arriving in this particular place. And here we can see kind of the connection if we think about tourism, um, kind of tourists and the local community, how the, the development of this attraction, the Christmas tourism also has a strong connection between the locals and the tourists. Kind of they are meeting at, in this particular place, uh, some coming to, to spend the holidays, and others actually that we are living there and we are actually amazed uh, by the, the uh, interest that people had to visit their place. Uh, in this case, so there were also, of course, companies who played an important role and the political actors, the municipality in Rovaniemi, the, the, also the, the province, uh, the governor, but also there were also tourism organizations like the Tourism Promotion Center, uh, Lapland Tourism Limited, also it was a local uh, tourism organization. So there we have kind of different levels of, of actors, so national, regional, um, but also in the UK, also there were different actors also uh, that were also playing a role in, in creating this kind of event and, um, and pushing this kind of uh, Christmas tourism uh, development. So and this is um, at this, uh, the Arctic Circle then, uh, as I was telling at the beginning that when we have this kind of Arctic Circle, one attraction, then Santa Claus actually coming into the Arctic Circle. And it happened then in the 90, mid 98, 80s, but also the beginning of the 90s and through the 90s, that the Arctic Circle uh, became uh, the place of, of Santa Claus and where Santa Claus was uh, receiving uh, uh, his visitors so uh, at the beginning, it was only uh, during the during the season, so during the, the winter season or the Christmas season, and then at some point it was extended. And nowadays, so like uh, Santa Claus can be can uh, be met every day of the year in, in that particular place. Um, so the Arctic Circle became uh, the kind of the main office of Santa Claus. 
because that is something also that is told in the in the story that Santa Claus still lives in the year fell in Korvatunturi, very far away, but he has his office in Rovaniemi, Finland. He has the, the, the chamber, the office where he receives uh, his guests. Um, and this has been since the 90s the, the, the main kind of also attraction product uh, for the tourists. Um, even still, if we think about Rovaniemi, there is uh, also other things that you can do in the place and other things that attract people around the world. But still, Christmas and the feature of Santa Claus uh, plays a very important role. And not only for, for Rovaniemi as a, as, a, as a small kind of city and, and community, but also for the entire Finland. Uh, still, you can see so like uh, the, the attraction here, uh, so kind of meeting Santa Claus, that is the, the thing that most people will do. This is actually a recent, recent picture from this year. I'm, I'm kind of visiting Santa Claus with my father uh, in, it was in Soma this year. But it's usually what uh, people will do going there to, to see Santa Claus um, and take a picture with him. So in the 90s, so like uh, it was the development kind of, I would say that um, Christmas, uh, especially Christmas tourism, because we can we can see that at the beginning kind of uh, uh, the British market played a very important role in, in the development of tourism in, in Rovaniemi. So, uh, and the Christmas season was a very important one, the winter season in relation to Christmas. Um, and then different kind of activities, different kind of services were developed during that time. Uh, but still, there was the idea of maybe this kind of idea of Christmas uh, land to have a still it here in the place. And at some point, they also developed a place called uh, Santa Park. Uh, that was kind of, it was supposed to be kind of an amusement park. Kind of, I, I think that the ideas of, of Tarva about the uh, Christmas land were kind of still very present in this particular project. Uh, they created kind of amusement park inside a cave here in Rovaniemi. Um, it was actually developed for uh, British tourists, um, but still uh, it was not uh, kind of very successful. Uh, maybe some people would say that it was kind of too plastic to kind of, uh, it was not kind of related to the locality. It was uh, kind of kind of Disneyland in, in, in Rovaniemi. And that it was not something that tourists were looking for in that sense. Uh, but the interesting thing about this particular place also is again, the role of uh, different actors in developing the attraction as it has happened also in, in relation to Rovaniemi as a tourism destination. So we have kind of companies involved, also big companies, uh, Finnish companies, uh, but also then the municipality, uh, also the uh, the uh, Finnish government also through one of the its ministries was involved in the project. So in that sense, kind of if we think about the idea of public private partnership, they played a very important role in creating these these attractions in in in, in Rovaniemi. Um, so the the idea of Santa Park uh, was implemented for a couple of years after its uh, inauguration in 1998. But at some point also they had to make a decision about what is the future of the place. And then at the end, uh, because Santa Park at the beginning also when it was open, it was uh, owned by the municipality. Uh, and then at the end, it was actually then given to a company. And now it's operated as a private company. So, and also there's also something about kind of the relation between who, which actors are, are the one who operate tourism in a, in a, in a region, in a particular community, uh, private companies, or it should be the public entities. Uh, and I think that is something we can see uh, very well here in the case of Rovaniemi and how Christmas tourism was developed. So you're checking on time so that I am not kind of going too, too fast or too slow. Uh, with this uh, story of, of, of Rovaniemi as a Christmas uh, tourism destination. Uh, but, uh, but the development of, of Rovaniemi as a Christmas tourism kind of attraction destination uh, started in the 90s, continued through the 2000. Uh, and as I said, so like uh, maybe 
always it was not that like uh santa claus was the the main feature of the whole destination but still it, it was a, it played a very important role in it uh, and I, as i was telling so like uh, the whole development of the region was actually driven by the idea of christmas and, and santa claus living here in Rovaniemi. but uh it was until in 2010 when actually then it uh it took uh more kind of impulse in the day of having kind of Santa Claus and Christmas as the main kind of uh, uh, the main kind of image of the whole destination, uh, kind of in that sense, I make it more official because, as I was saying, it was already part of, of it. But uh, they did it more official by get, getting the acknowledgement that Rovaniemi was the official hometown of Santa Claus. Um, it was actually re it's recognized by the European Union. And at that time, there were also other cities competing for the same uh, recognition. And uh, one city was in, or community was in uh, Norway, and the other one in, in Sweden. And then we had uh, Rovaniemi. And Rovaniemi was the winner of this kind of, uh, kind of uh, um, competition for which is a city which will uh, be the official hometown of Santa. Uh, Maybe the decisions for, for this, uh, something that maybe played a role, maybe was the infrastructure of the place. Uh, the story also was very strong, strongly uh, connected to, to, to Lapland and, and, and Rovaniemi as a city, as I was telling about before, uh, but also kind of uh, accessibility to the place. So uh, we have an airport in, this, in the city, good uh, rail connections, uh, good infrastructure. Um, and so like a, and a community that is living around the place because this was the other special also maybe um, positive aspect of, of Rovaniemi as, um, as a tourist destination that it has a, a community living in the place and, and, and tourism was strongly connected to, to it. But yeah, since 2010, uh, Rovaniemi is the official hometown of Santa Claus and the whole brand of the city was developed around Christmas. So the, the values of, of, of the brand of Rovaniemi nowadays are kind of connected to, to, to Christmas. And this is the thing that uh, the city and the tourism organization have tried to, to make that, uh, that locals also live according to the values. And this may be one of the challenges we have uh, about it, because we're talking about a place where Christmas doesn't last only one month, but Christmas is around the year is kind of part of the city and how to make this part of the identity of the people who live in the place. Uh, and there is something we, we discussed in the, in the, in the book uh, we um, uh, wrote here uh, in, at the University of Lapland about always Christmas because it's the idea that Christmas, so we are living always in Christmas uh, and how people feel about this idea. Um, but yeah, maybe we can talk about it also when we talk about some of the challenges we have about also when we talk about the developing a community around the Christmas theme. But uh, which uh, Christmas uh, in Rovaniemi? So um, there's uh, sometimes, so like when people visit uh, Rovaniemi, uh, they will tell that, okay, that is kind of too American or too kind of, this kind of Anglo-American uh, Christmas in that sense, because you have Santa Claus, so it's kind of with a red coat and everything. Um, but uh, but as you you already saw, there is the connection to the, the Santa Claus story in Lapland. Um, and it's not like Rovaniemi or Lapland has adopted this idea from outside and has implemented it into this particular place. But of course, there are some aspects of this Anglo-American uh, Christmas, but they are connected also to the Finnish Christmas. Uh, you can see also in the case of the picture with Santa Claus. So it doesn't exactly look like the kind of American Santa Claus, a little bit kind of different, but still with the kind of sim similarities to that particular uh, feature that is used in the United States. So, or for example, we compare to the, to the Father Christmas in, in the UK. Um, but the interesting thing about this, uh, sometimes when, yeah, People may think that, yeah, it's the Coca-Cola Santa Claus is used here in Finland. But the interesting thing to know about is that also the, 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 the person who designed it, uh, the image of Santa Claus, which is used by uh, Coca-Cola, his name was Hadon Sonblom or Sonny. 
and uh, he was a Finn, or well, not a Finn, actually, he wasn't born in Michigan, but he was a descendant from Finns, so the, uh, his parents were from, from Finland, uh, Swedish-speaking Finn from Holland Island. So uh, in that sense, so there was also a connection to, to Finland. So the person who was designing the Santa Claus for Coca-Cola has a connection to Finland. I, I think that maybe he may uh, have been influenced by the stories I was telling you about in, uh, before, about uh, Santa Claus coming from, from Lapland um, and this kind of storytelling that maybe he was in, influenced in somehow when he was designing Santa Claus for Coca-Cola. In that sense also, it's, there's no kind of detachment between the Santa Claus uh, in Coca-Cola and the way actually Christmas is presented in, in, in Rovaniemi. But, uh, but that is something that also uh, decision makers in Rovaniemi have tried to make kind of clear to have the, also this kind of Finnish uh, Christmas also connected to, to the way they represent uh, tourism Christmas in the city. Um, but also still, maybe uh, we will maybe talk about it then later. So about how maybe some locals or Finnish uh, people may think that maybe also uh, a lot of Finnish Christmas elements are missing from the way we represent Santa Claus to the, to the tourists. Yeah, there's some pictures uh, I was thinking to share uh, with you about how things look nowadays. Well, you can see also in the, my background, this kind of uh, Santa Claus village uh, uh, um, uh, today. Uh, so it's a very recent picture. And then uh, also, actually, this Santa Claus village here now on in the in the on the screen. It, I was I took this picture I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, so you can get a, a feeling about about the place how it looks like. And and the the main building you can see here close to the Christmas tree is the Santa Claus office. It's a place where the tourists will go to to see Santa Claus. Um, and then also on the top you can see the cabin, the cottage. Uh, so this is the cottage where Eleanor Roosevelt actually uh, visit. Uh, the one built in 1950. It's still there in, in, in the place. And this is very interesting because sometimes tourists will come to the place and they will look around, but nobody will be looking at the cottage. So and I think the cottage, has a, from the historical point of view, uh, played a very important role in the development of, of tourism in, in, in Lapland, in, sorry, in Rovaniemi. Um, and and you, you, you could see even it is kind of connected to the Arctic Circle, but still it was kind of a very important element in, in promoting the development of the, the Arctic Circle as a place where later Santa Claus will be having his office. So here kind of more or less kind of connections um, to the local community in the sense that uh, every year we had the opening of Christmas uh, in Santa Claus Village, but also uh, Santa Claus uh, also will come to the city center. Uh, of course, it's an uh, event that is uh, kind of um, um, maybe kind of um, created for, for tourists, but also uh, locals will go there to see Santa Claus. Uh, so many locals also will go to Santa Claus Village uh, when uh, during the opening of the Christmas season. Uh, so in that sense, still they are kind of in this particular place that attract also the locals. Um, but also in other occasions, maybe the locals maybe may not go to Santa Claus Village in a daily, every day, or cannot during the year. But there are certain times when maybe they will stop by and, and say hello to Santa Claus. Uh, and also what we can see kind of uh, nowadays when when uh, we have the brand of Christmas, so how also it's shaping the city, uh, the red color, also the information um, screen here very close to the railway station, Rovaniemi, the color red, and kind of pointed to the Christmas uh, scene. Uh, and that is something that the tourist organizations in, in, in Rovaniemi, they have been trying to do kind of to, to make the, the brand, the Christmas brand visible in, in every uh, part of the, of the city. Uh, recently also, uh, there was some kind of... Um, a day, I think it was the day of the opening of Christmas, but I, I'm, I'm not sure about, about it now, but it was one day, a, a couple of weeks ago, where um, uh, the uh, the city was asking uh, people to, to have a red hat. So during that day, so like to, uh, like an elf. 
Um, some uh, children in the schools they did it, but not many people maybe reacted to the to the um, to the kind of to the call to to put a, a red hat on or kind of a elf hat on on your head. Uh, but these are the things that maybe yeah we, when we talk about a little bit about the challenges uh maybe are interesting also in relation to to uh tourism development kind of related to christmas and rovaniemi yeah this is rovaniemi 2023 um so you can see in the top is the arctic uh, circle or santa claus village in the background you can see the city also below also the city of rovaniemi some pictures uh during the winter um and now you can actually you go back to the pictures i I show you at the beginning about Rovaniemi destroyed, totally destroyed in 1944, 45. Then the city had changed a lot. And as I told you at the beginning, so there are other industries that have played a role in the development of the city, the community, uh, but also tourism have, has has played an important role. And nowadays also it has become a very important uh, uh, sector, economic sector in this particular community. So like uh, tourism also, and maybe soon I will talk, talk a little bit about the kind of the benefits that are brought by tourism to this particular community. Also the airport of Rovaniemi also kind of uh, was also renovated recently. Uh, so you can see some pictures also there from, from the airport. So like, um, yeah, kind of the city has developed uh, very fast uh, during the last uh, 40, 50 years. Here, maybe some kind of uh, tourist statistics about uh, Rovaniemi. Uh, so tourism grows uh, this Christmas season is about 20%. So it's, it's growing very fast. Uh, winter season, uh, total amount of travel is around 300,000. So um, you also think that Rovaniemi uh, is actually the biggest city in Europe in, in, in kind of inland. Uh, in size, uh, but uh, it, it's in number of inhabitants is only the whole area of Rovaniemi has 60,000 inhabitants. Uh, the, the center of the of town uh, is something like 36,000. And you see that, okay, during the winter season, you may have 300,000 uh, travelers coming to Rovaniemi is 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 a, a a huge number. Maybe from for Japan, so it would be not a very big, but for this condition here, maybe it's kind of a huge number of people coming to this particular place. Uh, the December December amount of travel is about sixty thousand to eighty thousand people. So you can see actually kind of forty percent maybe of travelers are coming in December. So the Christmas tourism is actually one of the attractions in in that case. Uh, people coming here to spend Christmas. Uh, and yeah, what ha ha happened during the uh, recently, during the last years, so before uh, the pandemic, but also after the pandemic, is the, the uh, rapid development of the connections, flight connections to different parts of the world. Um, and Rovaniemi at the moment has 24 direct flight connections to different cities in Europe. Actually, from Rovaniemi, you can fly to London, to Dublin, to Berlin, to Vienna, to Madrid, so uh, to um, Istanbul. So uh, this is not very common in many cities in, in, in Finland. So I would say that at the moment after Helsinki, Rovaniemi is the busiest airport, in doing, especially during the winter season. So tourism generates over 400 million euros. So from the economic point of view, very kind of important for, for the community in this particular peripheral region. Um, and overall, Rovaniemi is about one third of the tourism in Lapland. So uh, you can see also it's kind of very important in relation to other destinations in Lapland. So it's still Rovaniemi. Uh, it has a leading uh, position. Uh, and there are about half a million travelers visiting Santa Claus Village every year. So and I, and I think that it's more than that. But according to the statistic, uh, that is the number. Uh, uh, I don't know how exactly they are counting the people visiting the place, but I would say that maybe it's more, more than half a million travelers going to Santa Claus Village. But just to give you an idea about, about the statistic of tourism and maybe the impact that tourism is having on, 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 on this particular uh, place, this particular community. And also, if, maybe you are kind of going back to the story and to the history of Romaniemi. From, and how this tourism was developed, and now we have kind of the results at this moment. So uh, you can see how the role that tourism can play also in developing this particular town. Um, yeah, and going kind of uh, 
kind of going to the what the conclusions and and I was thinking to to point uh, towards some of the benefits of, of kind of tourism development or the idea of Christmas tourism in developing uh, this particular Arctic uh, community. So we see, okay, the economic impact. So like a uh, uh, tourism is a uh, is an important source of of revenues uh, for the city, uh, for the creation of, of entrepreneur ent 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 enterprises. Uh, so like companies. And if we're talking about kind of companies operating in this part of of of, of Lapland, uh, then we think also we're talking about employment opportunities. In that sense, uh, a, a lot of uh, locals or people living here are are working in the tourism in industry and tourism sector. Um, but also from even for for the people who maybe may not be working in tourism. Also, there are some also benefits for, for them, of course. If we have an economic impact, then we will have tax revenues that will be used in different kind of aspects of social life for the local community. Uh, but also, uh, as we can see, that the infrastructure we have in this part of, of Finland also is also because of tourism. Maybe if we wouldn't have tourism, we may not have the same infrastructure we have at the moment. So if we talk about roads, uh, rail connections, uh, airports, for example. Uh, so accessibility also is, is a benefit so that you can reach uh, Rovaniemi very easy by train, uh, by, by car or by, by plane. So I, I was uh, telling before, flight connection. So of course, in the winter, you can have uh, tourists coming from different parts of the world with direct flights, but also this also provide the opportunity for some locals also to, to access other parts of Europe with direct flights without going to Helsinki. Uh, if they want to take a holiday or something like that. So, um, and also the level of services. So uh, if without tourism, the local community may not be enjoying, for example, the services we have at the moment. If we think about retail, or if we think about restaurants, uh, about uh, kind of different kind of services that are provided in the city, um, it is also because of the amount of tourists we, we get every year. So in that sense, we can see kind of a positive impact of the development of this kind of Christmas tourism here in Rovaniemi, Finland. But also at the same time, there are some challenges also that uh, need to be discussed. And I think that also kind of researchers and, and also policy makers, they are discussing these issues because they have to be addressed. So like, for example, uh, sustainable tourism planning in a period of exponential growth. So in that sense, uh, at the beginning, uh, Rovaniemi has been growing kind of uh, step by step into uh, becoming a tourism destination, attracting tourists. But during the last uh, five, six years, it has been growing exponentially, very, very fast. Uh, so, for example, the Rovaniemi airport was expanded uh, four or five years ago. And I think that now maybe they would need to expand it again because it's not enough for the capacity for the uh, number of travelers that are actually coming to the place. Um, so, and also the amount of tourists also coming in the city. So it, it start to kind of maybe to, to reshaping uh, the, the community as a whole. In that sense, uh, there is a need for this kind of uh, planning in a way that is, uh, that then the results or the impact of tourism is, is positive rather than getting kind of negative uh, kind of uh, fabrics. Uh, tourism work is also a challenge. So like uh, we can see as tourism is growing, so lack of labor force. So like people working in tourism, so nowadays a lot of companies, they have to bring also uh, workers from other places of Finland or from abroad because they, there is no enough uh, uh, labor or, or employees uh, to be found in this area or, or this uh, in the community here in Rovaniemi. Uh, but at the same time, also the working conditions. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there were some articles, research about uh, uh, Christmas tourism in relation to work uh, and labor. So um, as in tourism in many places, most of the workers are young, female, uh, so like, uh, and uh, maybe the, the payment is not actually the, the best. Uh, so kind of the normal common conditions of tourism work, but in this particular place in Rovaniemi. Also animal welfare issues. So increasing the number of tourists, it means that you need also an increasing number of animals working in tourism. Uh, so we are, usually we talk about, about people who work in the, in this particular sector, but also there are, um, 
thousands of animals working in tourism uh, at the global level. And in here in Romaniemi, uh, the capital of Lapland, also we have reindeer working in tourism in the tours offered to the to the, to the visitors, uh, huskies for the sled, uh, sled uh, dog sledding tours, and so on. So and then uh, when the demand increased, then also demand of, of animals increased, and that's also may lead to animal where animal welfare questions that we need to address. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer accommodation also has been a topic of discussion, and also we we have been doing some research uh, on that here in uh, people at the University of Lapland uh, about Airbnb and the impact of Airbnb, for example, on on the hospitality sector in in Romaniemi. Uh, a lot of discussions also between the the kind of the hospitality sector uh, and, and the this kind of informal peer-to-peer -peer accommodation sector. Um, also criticism from the local community. Some locals, they are happy to offer the apartments for rent and some lo locals are not very happy about it because the consequence of, of this kind of uh, type of accommodation for their daily life. Uh, then also about locals versus tourist sites. So like uh, it has also been become kind of very clear that there are certain parts of the city that during the season they are for tourists and certain parts are for locals. So in that sense, also an interesting phenomenon how locals, they also create their own spaces where they go and, and tourists also, they, they have their own spaces. In that sense, kind of interesting to think about sort of when kind of this kind of, when we think about tourism as a force for community development, when actually, where, where are the, the limits and, and the boundaries? So like when actually then the local community start, we maybe not very close to, to that development and maybe start to, alienate themselves for it. Uh, and this actually, we come back to this kind of sustainable tourism plan in that sense, to make planning plays a very important role to avoid these situations uh, to happen. Uh, then the idea of Finnish Christmas versus Anglo-American Christmas, and that is something that actually was addressed in, in the research we did about always Christmas uh, with the students, um, that the locals uh, also, they, they felt that uh, they, the, the Christmas tourism that we have doesn't totally represent uh, the Finnish traditions and uh, that the, the Finnish tradition is actually missing in to some level. Um, maybe also something to think about if we think that we're talking about Christmas tourism in that particular community or how how, how authentic it should be um, um, for the for the Finns or the people living in Romania maybe it's not uh, what they may call Christmas. Um, then the idea of brand identity and, and the versus the alienation of the local community from tourism. And that is something I, I mentioned at the beginning that there have been very kind of a lot of different initiatives to include the local community into this kind of uh, Christmas tourism brand. But uh, but it has been a kind of a very difficult task, so like to to get everyone involved into into this uh, idea. Um, and maybe it's because of this at the moment, I think and maybe in the 90s, uh, beginning of 2000, still people, they so they have a strong connection maybe to Santa Claus Village still uh, in in the way they saw the, the place where they were living. But nowadays they, they start to see it kind of more kind of a tourism thing and maybe not kind of part of the daily uh, life or the, the way they live in this particular town. Um, but yeah, but then some lesson for community development through tourism. And I, I didn't want to, to tell about this issue at the beginning. I thought that maybe through the stories I was telling about Christmas and how it was developed here in, in Romanim as a tourism attraction destination, that maybe you may have uh, connected or created some connection to some uh, theory discourse in tourism studies. So like we think about the uh, idea of innovation uh, and the role of trailblazers in, in creating these innovations that so we can see in, in Romanimi, there were certain personalities that played a very important role in, in, in pushing this idea forward. And sometimes it didn't happen at that time, maybe the time was not the right one, but then later it happened. And they play a very important role in, in, in this, in creating these kind of innovative ideas and new products and services for, for, for tourism. So product development also played a very important role. And not only kind of this kind of customer driven product development in that sense, because we can see that the British market was played a very important role in in, in kind of uh, in, in, in uh, driving the development of services for that particular market. But also we can see that also the place, the idea of 
the stories of Christmas in, in Rovaniemi, in Lapland, and the, the local tradition. So at some point, we're also connected to the way uh, products and services were developed for the tourists. Uh, the role of public private partnerships also kind of is very clear, and maybe in this case, uh, and you may have seen many connections about how it's about companies, entrepreneurs that join this kind of uh, development, but also at the same time, uh, they need also the support of public organizations so that uh, without without their support, it's, it's kind of difficult to move forward. And that is something that maybe happened at some point in the 60s, 70s with these ideas about developing Christmas tourism, that there was no support from political actors. But then uh, later it happened. So the, the political actors, decision makers, actually, they give support to this idea. And then when everything starts taking off in relation to Christmas tourism. So entrepreneurship, uh, collaboration. So like a uh, um, collaboration between different actors, not only companies, uh, so plays a very important role. And then uh, something that also I had discussed in one article, I, I didn't mention here, but it's about this uh, the idea of co-creation as improvisation, that not, things don't happen always as planned, but it's, it's a result of improvisation, things that happen on, on the way, along the way, that may lead the development of, of tourism in a, in a particular direction. Uh, and that is what, uh, with some colleague of mine, we call this kind of a co-creation as improvisation in that sense. And I think that the case of Rovaniemi and the way tourism was developed, it's a feedback way into, into this idea. But this is kind of more or less my presentation. I, I hope that you kind of um, got some ideas uh, from uh, uh, Christmas tourism in relation to community development. And if you would like to know more about the topic, also there are here the references. Uh, used in in this presentation, uh, so you will get that kind of uh, there are different studies you can look into and get more insights into the topic. And as I was saying at the beginning, so you can visit on our website, and you will also have access to the to different publications. Also, the always Christmas is also available, or you will find a link in the in my website. And as I said, it's in Finnish, unfortunately, but uh, the list of references could be helpful if you are looking to get more insight into this particular topic area. But thank you very much. Um, um, I don't know, maybe if we have still time for questions, then I I'm more than happy to, to answer them. Okay, thank you very much, JC. Uh, I think we still have some time for question and answer. Very insightful research about Christmas tourism. Uh, let's invite our audience. Please leave your question or raise up your hand. Still have a, quite a lot of people here. Mm. It's it's definitely very new topic for me because um, I think Christmas in Asia. Uh, I don't think it's starting from the roots of the culture here. It's just uh, mm. just probably a way of commercialization to <laughs> to increase uh, people to buy and purchase. Yeah. Uh, before ah okay we have the first question uh yeah. it's like if christmas village like uh romania are pop pop popping up more and more how can romania stay competitive and what role can art play hmm. very interesting yeah thanks for 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 the question and, and yeah indeed uh, there are all the kind of places coming coming up so popping up uh, kind of similar to Rovaniemi, but uh, I would say that they are not kind of maybe like destinations, but more kind of attractions. So like, for example, in Portugal also, as I was one of the examples I have at the beginning was uh, about the Ovidos in Portugal. So they had this kind of uh, Christmas town, um, but still maybe it's not at the level of, uh, as in Rovaniemi was done. And, and also there was actually some, some plans in the past also to develop similar places in China, for example, so like Christmas towns uh, in that particular country. Um, um, yeah, but I assure that they are, they are and they are created. Um, but uh, I see that the way kind of Rovaniemi stay competitive uh, in, in relation to these places, that is, it may be the kind of a strong connection to, to the place in that sense. Uh, to the to the Arctic environment, uh, uh, to the storytelling that they have around on the idea of the feature of Santa Claus and, and Christmas, 
And even there are kind of some kind of still some, some limitations, as I was telling in the presentation, that maybe some aspects maybe of Finnish Christmas are not kind of present always in, in these kind of stories. But, but still, there are, there are strong connections there. Um, and this kind of make the place unique in that sense. Um, and I, I think it's a kind of a combination of all elements. So you have kind of this kind of Arctic environment, the nature, and then you have the storytelling about Santa Claus or Christmas. And, and this all kind of create this uniqueness of the place that uh, helped uh, the place to, to stay competitive in the long term. And, and every, every year is stronger than, than before, because as I was saying now, the number of tourists uh, arriving to Romania has been increasing uh, every year. And so like, uh, for example, in 2019, it was the, we had a record of visitors. Uh, and now this year, I think we will be breaking that particular record. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, before our next question coming, I would have uh, something related to the authenticity because I, I found out the the Finnish Christmas and uh, Anglo American Christmas are quite different. How they uh, they reshape the destination is very interesting. Me, do you think it's during this process? Do you think it's quite a creative destruction if if they are not really respect the local culture? And is that uh, is that really a local control of the tourism department development process, or can you provide more information about this? Yeah, it is. Um, maybe maybe the the way uh, kind of Christmas tourism was developed is is a, is a, as I was telling at the beginning that we have this kind of Anglo American Christmas, but at the same time, so kind of the Finnish Christmas. It's kind of a it's it's a, it's, it's match. In this kind of Christmas tourism, uh, also the so we have actually the the elements from the Finnish storytelling about Christmas and Santa Claus, but at the same time we we have to see that the development of Christmas tourism also was pushed by the uh, by travelers coming from the UK in that sense, and they say all this kind of process has created this kind of the, the Christmas we we have and the way we present it to the to the customers, so. Um, so what makes it authentic? Uh, and yeah, the, the, we got into kind of the discussion about authenticity. What is authentic thing and to who is authentic? Uh, and I, I, I think that it's still kind of for the for the locals, they, 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 they I think that they connect to the idea of kind of Christmas and, and Finland and Rovaniemi, for example, having Santa Claus. And, and it's something that the, the people in Finland will, will Tell about so they, okay, the Santa Claus live in Finland and that they have this Santa Claus village. Um, and still, if there are some kind of differences to the how they maybe Christmas is spent in 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 your in your house in, in when you're home in 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 Finland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hope that maybe I was able to answer your your question. Right. Well, that that's definitely very helpful. Uh, we have two questions popping up at the yeah, same sure. time. One by Professor Johan. Do you think it was just luck to select Santa or could another town be equally successful by selecting the Easter bunny or another global mythical figure? Hmm. Very interesting question. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. Wow. Uh, yeah. I, I, so it was luck to select Santa. I think that is uh, it fit it fitted very well in the idea of kind of developing Romania as a tourism destination in that sense. So like uh, uh because it's it's in the idea of Santa Claus about living in Lapland, the Arctic Circle. So all all these kind of elements were already kind of in in Romania. Uh, um, I I wouldn't say I wouldn't think that another another feature maybe that. Would has been selected would fit very well into the particular frame that we have here in, and the community you have here living in this part of of Finland. Uh, in that sense, I think because always when you are kind of developing an attraction and, and, and a product, you know, so you have to to have the elements there in place. You cannot actually some bring something there. But so like for example, there wasn't maybe the thing that when we were thinking about this kind of having the. That they are developing a similar park uh, like Disneyland in in in, in Romania. 
it didn't fit the kind of the context and it was the reason maybe it was not very successful at the beginning but uh but the idea of santa maybe kind of is was a very good fit for for this particular place and, and this particular town uh I, I was I don't know if luck maybe for selecting that particular feature, um, but I, I don't think that they would have the same luck with an, a different kind of uh, character or a different mythical feature. Okay, we have another question from uh, Donatella. Uh, I have a curiosity that the flow of tourists come from uh, come more from Europe. Uh, what about Italy? Is the interest more uh, for the village or, or mm -hmm. rural destination, I think, but also for the northern lights and the beauty of the winter landscape? Thanks. Yeah, we have actually at the moment uh, um, a lot of tourists coming from, from Europe, um, from yeah, Germany, France, Holland, so kind of British uh, tourists and from Spain, also from Italy. So uh, many also tourists coming from, from that particular also European country. Um, and I think that, uh, so for some some tourists, maybe still maybe the idea of, if they're coming for the Christmas time, maybe the idea of meeting Santa Claus or visiting Santa Claus village could be one maybe reason for also coming. Well, but uh, it's true that also there are other kind of uh, activities that also are interesting to them. As for example, Donatella mentioned uh, Northern Lights or, or or experiencing Arctic nature. So like, or, or in the winter conditions in, in, in Rovaniemi. So there would be kind of uh, reasons for traveling. And then uh, the idea of Christmas and Santa Claus is just one of the things they will do while being here. So like if they are coming here to Rovaniemi, then they will go and visit Santa Claus village um but maybe there are other other things that uh that maybe they will be will be ap appealing for for them uh and it is uh, actually referred also to the discussion that uh that the people here in in Robani Mihat, uh, when they were making a decision where they should have the christmas brand and maybe one more kind of general brand because for some people they thought that for the tourists it's more kind of the arctic nature uh what is the, the thing that uh attracting to this particular place and not just Santa Claus and and they were thinking that maybe putting kind of creating the brand around Christmas would be kind of a, a risk for them or for the future of the destination but uh, but at the same time yeah when they make the decision uh, it, it maybe it has not been also a disadvantage in that sense so it, now we have the Christmas brand maybe if for some tourists it's not the main reason for coming here but still it does not um, destroy the the idea of Rovaniemi as a nature based destination or so but yeah they are they are also the the I think the beauty, the beauty of the winter landscape and especially among Italian tourists I think that this is something they will they are looking for as for example yesterday I was um in 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 the in the forest uh, close to the city center um here in Rovaniemi and there were um, uh some families from um uh, Spain and Italy uh, there, and we have some very beautiful uh, aurora borealis or northern lights, and they were really impressed uh, by that and taking pictures. And, and actually, what they were doing there, they were actually playing with the sledge and these kind of things. And I think that these are also the things that they are, they are they're interesting in when coming to Rovaniemi. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would have added one more question. Uh, since you mentioned about the co-creation in the very end, uh, you also mentioned you, you don't have enough time to explain that part. Actually, mm -hmm. that part actually quite uh, interests me um, because this 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 is also kind of a process how we develop a very seasonal kind of uh, tourism product into a more mm -hmm. sustainable way or in some point, maybe in a regenerative way. So my question is how is there a kind of a potential to to educate the tourists? For example, what is authentic? Also connect to the authentic local community culture. Uh, so, could you also explain what the improvisation mean during this process? It's very interesting. I just would like uh, to ask you to explain more about this. Yeah, you, you mean sort of how to make how to uh, educate the tourists in what is authentic and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That is something that uh, 
in the research we did, so like some of the suggestion for some members of the local community was sort of yeah that in we talk about Christmas that also it could be an opportunity to to tell about uh, Finnish Christmas and and the different elements that you can find in the Finnish Christmas and that then the the tourism um, companies um, and players they have also kind of a responsibility to to bring this knowledge to the to the tourist. Um, um, to to show to have these elements in place, um, maybe something that some companies also have been doing, so to have more kind of elements from the Finnish Christmas in their places. Um, and in that sense, um, maybe uh, making kind of the visitors realize about oh, these kind of Finnish elements that are part of the Finnish traditions and so on. But um, but yeah, it could be one of the things that also could be done to to. Um, Increased maybe the the level of authenticity of the of the experience, but then again we go into this kind of discussion of authenticity. There are kind of different ways you can also kind of uh, define what's authentic uh, and to who is authentic. Uh, so to, it's authentic to the locals or authentic to the visitors or authentic to the company who is producing it. Or, mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, we have another question from Mia, and you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, promotional activities in the UK, but how has the Romani been promoted to other markets? I've been heard that there are official Santa calls traveling around the world. Yeah, I also saw some video from the Twitter. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah, there is. Uh, uh, and here yeah, actually we see the role of of political actors at the national level, regional level. So like a in trying to promote the place, it's not just about entrepreneurs or companies, but also the support of uh, kind of um, kind of political actors in that sense that to to bring the message uh, to different countries that Santa Claus is living in, in for example, in Lapland, in Rovaniemi. And yeah, there is something that has been actually used uh, a lot, for example, bringing Santa Claus to China or to Singapore or to or other countries to to visit the places and to. To tell about so again, this kind of marketing promotion um but at the beginning it was very uk based as we can see from the history also that uh a lot of the kind of uh, and it was maybe the most important market also for for Rovaniemi at the beginning but then when they start to expand then uh they start kind of also going to different kind of destinations with this kind of um, narrative uh and maybe for some destination the narrative of christmas may, may be more important than than the narrative about the arctic and especially uh, when the Chinese market or, or the Chinese tourists also were coming to, to Lapland for them, it was one of the, also the, the main reasons or important reasons was Santa Claus, kind of meeting Santa Claus. And it's something we, we could see a lot in, in Santa Claus Village. And we can see also that Santa Claus visit many times China and different parts of China during that time. So we're promoting it. Okay, thank you. Since you mentioned about Chinese tourists, uh, there is a, a, a Chinese asking another question. Thank you for your presentation. Do you think yeah, if we were develop Christmas tourism, does this will cause the problem of the disappearance of the localism or the local culture? Thank you. Yeah, it will. It will depend so for for whom is is developed and what kind of Christmas tourism. So I was telling at the beginning we are talking about the Anglo American Christmas. But uh, but if maybe some destinations or some places maybe will focus more on this kind of local type of understanding Christmas. For example, I know that in places like in, in Venezuela, I think there's also kind of a small town when they have this kind of Christmas uh, kind of town, but it's more kind of uh, re related to the way uh, Venezuelans uh, uh, spend Christmas. Yeah, and it's more for the, the tourists, for the Venezuelan tourists, the kind of domestic tourists. Uh, that is the target group. Um, so it depends on who is kind of a, it's about who is the customer, who is coming to visit, uh, for who is this attraction developed. Uh, so, and, and for what is the, actually the theme you are, you are actually using for developing this type of tourism. As in the case of Rovaniemi, so we can see that uh, it, it started to be developed for the UK market. And that is the reason also why we bring these also elements into, into this kind of uh, Christmas tourism in, in Rovaniemi. Um, and maybe this, uh, then we had the challenges about okay, what is local, what is not. Um, but it, I think it depends on this kind of factor: who who is a customer, uh, and where is produced, and what type of Christmas is developed, and, and so on. I don't know. I suppose in maybe in Japan you have also some places or some Christmas places. I don't know. Uh, it could be uh, because I was reading about the 
the importance of Christmas, for example, in Japan, and in that sense, and, and it's interesting because it's not kind of a, a religious uh, event, but it's more kind of a, a secular, and you have also kind of different kind of traditions related to it that were developed locally, I think, in Japan. So like, uh, interesting. Okay, thank you very much. And thanks for all the audience asking very uh, intriguing questions. I think we are just perfectly on time. And I think JC is also very tired. So may I just <laughs> close today's session? Well, well, for me, it's kind of midday. It's 1 p.m. <laughs> okay. right now. Um, it okay. would be nice to, to engage in a more kind of discussion on it. Kind of, uh, I so I have also many questions for the Japanese audience about about Christmas related topic. Um, but yeah, we don't have the time for that. Um, but uh, yeah, but feel free to to get in touch also if you are interested in the topic or you would like to get to know more. So um, you you will find my contact details and yeah, feel free to get in touch. Yes, I just sent. Uh, I just shared your website to everybody. Uh, okay, I think uh, people need to go to dinner or go to sleep in this. Yeah. Side. So thank you, everybody, and uh, uh, we will see you next year for our next lecture. And thank you, GC, okay. for your. Uh, thank wonderful... you very much for having me. Yes. Okay. Have a great day and have a great evening, everybody. Yeah. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye.